The next ayah is, is a very scary ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look at what he says. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki, Yawm, Al-Din. Iyaka na'budu, Iyaka nasta'in. Ihdina al-Sarat al-Mustaqim. Sarat al-Ladheen an'amta alayhim. غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أمين ألم تر إلى الذين أوتوا نصيبا من الكتاب يؤمنون بالجبت والطاوت ويقولون للذين كفروا هؤلاء أهدى من الذين آمنوا سبيلا أولئك الذين لعنهم الله ومن يلعن الله فلن تجد له نصيرا أم لهم نصيب من الملك فإذا لا يؤتون الناس نقيرا أم يحسدون الناس على ما آتاهم الله من فضله فقد آتينا آل إبراهيم الكتاب والحكمة وآتيناهم ملكا عظيما فمنهم من آمن به ومنهم من صد عنه وكفى بجهنم سعيرا إن الذين كفروا بآياتنا سوف نصليهم نارا كلما نضجت جلودهم بدلناهم جلودا غيرها ليذوقوا العذاب إن الله كان عزيزا حكيما والذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات سندخلهم جنات تجري من تحتها سندخلهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا لهم فيها أزواج مطهرة وندخلهم ظلا ظليلا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear brothers May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your good deeds Allahumma ameen And we are going to continue with our journey in Surah An-Nisa And I just want to remind you the following that uh, our lesson, our Fajr reflection, is not going to be a replacement for a Tafsir lesson. The purpose of our Fajr reflection is to encourage the brothers and the sisters who are following the Fajr, Fajr reflection to go back to the Tafsir. So this is the main point of having the Fajr reflection. So this is just to give you a taste of what you can benefit from the Quran. And Subhanallah, the benefit of the Quran is so limitless and no one can ever get enough of it. And no one can ever teach you enough of the tafsir. So there will always be meanings and subhanAllah certain reflections that the mashayikh and the ulama will be able to extract from the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> continues with Surah An-Nisa and he educates us and tells us and teaches us who the people of the book are, especially the Yahud, and what kind of people they are, and how do they think. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا نَصِيبًا مِنَ الْكِتَابِ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْجِبْتِ وَالطَّاغُوتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, have you not seen those who were given a portion of the scripture? They believe in Jibt. The question is, what is Jibt and what is Taghut? 
These words may refer to everything that is worshipped instead of or alongside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether it is an idol, a stone, a grave, a devil, or a human being, they may also refer to sorcery and witchcraft. That's what Al-Jibt wa Tagut is. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, these people, this is what they believe. يؤمنون بالجبت والطاغوت And they say to the disbelievers that they are more rightly guided than the believers as to the way. This is the story or the context behind this ayah. Some of the leaders of the Yahud, they went to Mecca, such as Ka'ab ibn al-Ashraf and others. When they went to, and Huyay ibn Akhtab, when they went to Mecca, the leaders of Quraysh met them. And they said to them, you are the people of the book. You are the people of knowledge. We want you to judge between us and Muhammad. Who do you think is better? And who do you think is closer to guidance? What do you think the Yahud said? Huyay ibn Akhtab and Ka'b ibn al-Ashraf. What do you think they said? They said, you guys, the Meccans, the Quraysh, you are more guided than Muhammad. <laughs> and they know the Prophet sallallahu he's upon guidance. They know he's a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they said to the Quraysh, you guys are more guided. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَيَقُولُونَ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا هَؤُلَاءِ أَهْدَى مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا سَبِيلًا And look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about them after that. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ لَعَنَهُمُ اللَّهِ Those are the ones whom Allah has cursed. And whomever Allah curses, you will not find any help for him. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued and he said, Am lahum nasibun min al mulk, fa la yu'tun al nasa naqira. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then has said, Or oh, do they have a share in dominion? The mulk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if that were so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, they would not give people as much as the speck on a date stone. So these Yahud, they're so stingy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, if they had the dominion, a share, of the, a share in dominion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, they would not give people as much as the speck on a date stone. And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, or do they envy other people for what Allah has given them of his bounty? So the ulama, they said, am yahsuduna nas am yahsuduna, or do they envy, they said, al-Yahud. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means. These Yahudis, do they envy the people? And who's the people? Ya'ni and nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How, how are they envying him? Or how are they jealous of, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? They were expecting a prophet, the final prophet to come. They were expecting that prophet to be from them, from their lineage, from their lineage. But when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came from the lineage of Ismail alayhi salam, they became the enemy of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, Am yahsuduna al-nas ala ma atahum Allahu min fadli? Or do they envy other people for what Allah has given them of his bounty? But we gave the family of Ibrahim, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, the scripture and wisdom and gave them a great kingdom. Subhanallah. Let us look at some of the things that was said regarding the danger of al-hasad, of envy. Subhanallah. والحسد مذموم وصاحبه مغموم وهو يأكل الحسنات كما تأكل النار الحطب. So the 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 illness of envy and jealousy is very serious and very dangerous. Very dangerous. Look at what was said regarding an envy. And envy is the fault. And this is how bad it is. والحسد مذموم. Envy is blameworthy. And the one who harbors, harbors it is condemned. It consumes good deeds just as fire consumes firewood, subhanAllah. As fire consumes firewood. And Anas radiallahu anhu has said, Anas radiallahu anhu, rawahu Anas an 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 sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The hadith that we have just mentioned. Hassan has said, Imam al-Hassan al-Basri, ma ra'aytu zaliman ashbaha bi mazlumin min hasidin. And Imam al-Hassan Basra said, I have not seen an oppressor who resembles the oppressed more than an envier. I'll repeat one more time. He said, Ma ra'aytu zaliman ashbaha bi bazlumin min hasidin. 
Who said, who's saying this? Imam Al-Hassan Al-Basri. He said, I have not seen an oppressor who resembles the oppressed more than an envier. Why? Because it is a perpetual anguish, constant sorrow and endless remorse. Subhanallah. So the person who's envy, who envies other people, the jealous person, always he will feel really bad. So he's the one who's going to suffer from his, subhanallah, envy before the other person suffers from it. Because he's the one who's going to feel sadness and sorrow and anguish throughout his life. And the one who's being envied might not even know about it, subhanallah. So it's quite dangerous. And I don't have the time to really go into it, but al-hasad is a serious illness. And hopefully we might, if we get time tomorrow morning, we might touch upon it. The different types of envy and jealousy, and is there a good type of jealousy and so forth? And what is what are the differences between the good jealousy and the bad jealousy and so forth? So we might touch upon it tomorrow in the light ta'ala. So we will continue with the next ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ آمَنَ بِهِ وَمِنْ some of them believed in, in, in the Prophet ﷺ, meaning some of the Yahud, and some of them turned away from him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, he will suffice as a raging fire. The next ayah is, is a very scary ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look at what he says. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِنَا سَوْفَ نُسْلِيهِمْ نَارًا كُلَّمَا نَضِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ بَدَّلْنَاهُمْ جُلُودًا غَيْرَهَا لِيَذُوقُ الْعَذَابِ Subhanallah. May Allah protect us from the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look what he said. As for those who reject our revelation, we will cast them into fire. As often as their skins are burnt through, we will replace them with fresh skins so that they may continue to taste the punishment. Verily, Allah is Almighty, most wise. Subhanallah. It was said, Every single hour, 1,000 times, the skin, the skin of the person who's burning in the hellfire, his skin will, will, will change 1,000 time, 1, times in every hour. Subhanallah. Why is Allah doing this to them? So they taste the pain of the fire. So as soon as the skin burns off, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaces the skin very quickly. And then what happens is the fire burns the skin all over again, subhanallah. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِنَا سَوْفَ نُسْلِيهِمْ نَارَ كُلَّمَا نَضِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ As often as their skins are burnt through, we will replace them with fresh skins. Subhanallah. And the people of the hellfire, their sizes are gigantic. Subhanallah. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned, when someone is in the hellfire, his teeth will be as large as the mountain of Uhud. That's just the teeth. The width, subhanAllah, the, uh, and how wide his shoulders are, it will take somebody to travel for three days. That's how wide the person is going to be. The shoulders of the person, subhanAllah. And the seat that the person is going to sit on, that seat is going to be the distance between Mecca and Medina. SubhanAllah. And that will be just the seat that the person is going to sit on. And that's just one person from the people of the hellfire. And that person, whenever his skin, subhanAllah, gets burned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace them with fresh skins. SubhanAllah. And then, why is Allah doing that? لِيَذُوقُ الْعَذَابِ So they may continue to taste the punishment. SubhanAllah. Verily, Allah is almighty, most wise. What's the other option? وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, But as for those who believe and do righteous deeds, we will admit them to gardens through which rivers flow, to abide therein forever. There they will have pure spouses. Okay, حُورُ الْعِينِ And we shall, we, should, we shall admit them to cool, refreshing shade. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those ones. You can see the two options people have. Either go to the hellfire, and that's what your punishment is going to be, or you go to the you go to paradise, and that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gonna take care of you. Subhanallah is one of those two options. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who take the second option and go to Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who will be granted paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those whom the angels will say to them, Salamun alaykum bima sabartum. Because waking up for Salatul Fajr requires a lot of sabr. Coming to the masjid requires a lot of sabr. Staying 
and sitting down after the salah and, and listening to Fajr reflection requires a lot of patience. And now I'm sure you're looking forward to going back home and inshallah ta'ala enjoying the rest of the morning and the day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who will meet one another in Jannatul Firdaus al-A'la. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.